Welcome to EIPIP meeting 42, and I have shared the agenda in the chat. The first item listed here is post-merge, will core cover execution and consensus, or do we plan to categorize EIPs based on what they touch? So EIP process after the merge is something that people are interested to learn about. Uh, I have picked up this agenda item from the EIP editing channel. Though I find some responses there later on, but not sure if there is any general agreement. Um, we discuss and come to a workable solution to most of the challenges related to EIPs, statuses, and the process. So I wonder what people of this group imagine the EIP process after the merge to be. So we lost slide client. I was curious for his thoughts, but I can share mine um, and what I've been trying to yeah. advocate for. Yeah, please. Um, so I I think EIPs are really good because they provide kind of an English description of the changes, uh, especially I'm just focusing on core EIPs right now. Um, and I, and I think there's a lot of value in like when there's a change to be able to like bundle it with an EIP number. So say, you know, EIP 1559 is this change to transaction fee market. Um, EIP uh, 2929 is this change to the gas cost prices and, and so on. Um, and, and I think that's like a really valuable property. Like, for example, now, if you look at the Altair upgrade, um, there isn't uh, there isn't EIPs for each of the changes, and it's kind of hard to like explain what all the changes do. Um, so that being said, EIPs are also not a great place to actually have the technical specifications for the changes for a bunch of reasons. And like client uh, has has gone onto this before, but it's just it's hard because like you don't have all the entire specification. So you have to provide a lot of context and whatnot. Um, and the the Quill team has been working on an executable specification for, for the execution layer. Um, so my, I guess uh, a long way of saying what I would like us to do is to keep core EIPs as a way to describe the changes that's at a high level, both on the execution and consensus layer. Um, but then not necessarily use them to, to have the actual technical implementation inside. Um, so that this way you could say an upgrade on the execution layer or the consensus layer has EIPs X, Y, and Z, and the EIPs all have a link to a PR in the, in the respective spec. And that PR is basically what um, the actual technical changes. Um, so that's what I would like to see. I don't think it's been fully like, decided yet. I don't think it will be fully decided before the merge actually happens. But right after the merge, I suspect is when we start working on the actual beacon chain fork is when um, uh, we'll probably look at that. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I generally agree to what you are saying. I just have one concern or maybe a question there. When we are talking about keeping it in a separate pull request, will that be a part of like a main Ethereum repository or would that be a part of the individual's repository? So it would be a PR, I guess, from the individual's fork onto the main Ethereum repository and then when it gets merged i guess when it gets accepted into a hard fork or something like the pr would always be on the main repository um right yeah. it's just opened by someone else and i guess if it gets accepted into a hard fork then the pr gets merged into the the main branch all right maybe i am um, uh, missing something here uh, but uh, if i understand for a proposal to be merged maybe even as a draft it has to have no external links. So the first first time when proposal is being proposed as a pull request to EIP repository, it will be individuals, but it gets accepted. And then uh, for further changes, there will be a link within the EIP for the technical specification. Um, yes. Yeah. So I guess uh, we'd have to have links for that. Yes. All right. I got it. So I'm, I'm not a fan of that strategy, as I'm sure no one's surprised <laughs> at. I prefer the strategy that I think um, Sam is planning on, which is that the execution specs repo, once it's ready, will have um, 
the human readable content in it. And so the entire process can be done in the specs repo. And already we have that, I think in the consensus specs repo, they already have the human readable version as well. No, they don't. Embedded. Where do they have that? I thought they, I pull it up. So they have the annotated specs. Yeah, um, like they have, which but the annotations those are, are human readable, right? Yeah, but those are, they're bad. They, they're good if you're reading the spec and you're trying to understand what it does. They're bad if you're trying to reason about like the why, you know, like when we have discussions about including EIPs, I think those are a pretty bad format because they don't walk you through like what's the rationale, what, um, you know, what, what basically benefits does this bring? What are like the trade-offs? And I think EIPs are great is, for that. They're like a really good self-contained document. Is that content that needs to survive a long period of time? I think so. I, and why is that? Why is that? Like someone in five years, when they're looking at the specs, why do they care? I think the, the value is like, it also helps like- time it was proposed. Right, right, yeah. It helps like encapsulate the changes in like a really valuable way. Like, I don't know. I found like I've struggled to like explain Altair to people more than I struggle to explain say like Berlin um, because it's not, quite as easy to like say hey there were these three changes brought in and like at a high level here's what <clears> each <throat> of them do so i i, I don't know it, it does feel like it maybe it's just for non-technical people like me uh, but it does I, feel like it makes it more legible I, I agree that information is useful what mike and what i'm contesting here is that how often are you explaining to people what was in homestead like you don't, you, you talk to people about like what's in Berlin because Berlin just happened or what's in the merge or Altair because it's very recent. But no one cares what happened in Homestead other than like the people who are implementing it and need to have a, a client that can travel through Homestead. And everyone else is completely oblivious and doesn't You're care. Right. Like regular humans, right. like not engineers, yeah. don't need that history long term. Um, so, and the reason I think it matters how permanent the information needs to be is because I think for certain types of content, we don't need like a really rigid long-term like standardization process. Like we just need a place for information to be. And that place can be somewhere that's more transient. Where transient here might mean a year or something, but it doesn't need to be like 10 years. Right. I guess the other thing is, and I'm not sure how, how much this is like valued here, but I think EIPs are really well understood by the community and they're like easy to point to and for people to like hatch on to. Um, whereas like even now that we've moved say the hard fork specs to like the specs repo, I still get, I had literally Vitalik asking me for the, the meta EIP for London, right? And being like, well, where's the meta EIP? So I think, I think there's like a really high cost when we move away from these systems. Like people just, you know, are used to them. And it's not to say that yeah. like we shouldn't do it. But yeah, I I don't know. I'm 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 a bit cautious of moving from e away from EIPs altogether, but it's not a hell. I, I, uh, I, I, I might agree. try to die on it. I, I won't fully die on it, but I'll, <laughs> I'll lose an arm or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hill I'm willing to lose an arm, maybe a foot on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I agree with you that change is hard and people will resist it no matter what it is. Like yeah. pretty much anything you change, people will resist. You change the color of the Facebook logo and people throw a fit. Like it yeah. doesn't matter what it is or how insignificant it is or how significant it is. And so I agree that if we do a change, uh, people will push back on it. And we should consider that to some extent. Um, I wish that people would stop using EIPs. <laughs> uh, I think this is, this is one of the things that I dream, maybe one day we can get to a place where people that aren't implementing specifications don't use EIPs for anything. Like no one who's using a web browser goes and looks at the W3C specs. Like they are incredibly right. technical and they are impossible for anyone to read. Regular people go look at like, and even regular developers go look at can I use dot or whatever like they go to other places to get that high level information they don't go to the specification like rfc
RFCs, same thing. The people who go to RFCs are people who are trying to implement an RFC compliant thing. And that is it. No one else looks at RFCs. And I, and I think this is where I end up uh, in conflict with a lot of people on the AP, EIPs because I want the EIPs to be that. I want them to be a technical specification designed for a very select group of people. Um, not that we want to exclude anybody, but just like the target audience is a very small set of people, the people that are implementing things on Ethereum directly, and they need a strict specification to look at. And then we have all that other stuff like that regular people go and look at somewhere else. And uh, I think I'm kind of alone on this. <laughs> I think everybody else would just rather the EIP's repo just be this monolithic thing where it has the source of all information for Ethereum. Um, I think my problem with that is a I don't really like monolithic things. I like things that are very targeted. Um, but separately, we just don't have the manpower to manage a repository that grows outside of the scope that it currently has. Uh, if we had more manpower, then I think I would push back less hard. Um, because as we extend the this, the audience, the target audience, it gets harder and harder to maintain things, and you get more and more people trying to get involved and contribute, and yeah. it just it becomes really hard. Whereas if you keep it very constrained, say, look, this is a targeted at these, you know, 30 people, and that's who we're going for, you know, we're not targeting everybody else, then like the management of it is much smaller because there's less people throwing things in at it. There's less people le reading it, less people um, debating, you know, what should we do for different things? So I don't know, maybe if we can somehow figure out a way to get more like people involved in the process at a low level, we could expand the target audience and not suffer as much. I, so I guess I kind of agree. I 100% agree with like the fact that limited by number of people limits the amount of things we can do. If that's really the main constraint, I think that's a solvable problem. Um, and I'm, I'm conscious that we've tried to solve this problem before with like mixed uh, success, but we've also tried harder things on Ethereum. Um, I, I'm also pretty sympathetic to your point of like no one cares after and, and, and whatnot. Um, I think I would be kind of fully on board with your vision. It's like if we have a better process defined for the, how do we actually talk about stuff and decide on stuff when we're doing it? Um, right. And that's, you know, I, 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 yeah. I think personally, I, I really like just as an engineer who uses GitHub all the time, like most of my day is on GitHub or it used to be at least. Um, I really like PRs and I like using PRs as the place where people discuss things and talk about things. I find them because the code is right there. It's like close to go by. And once the PR is merged, it kind of just goes away and you can still reference it. Like if you want to refer back to discussions or whatever you can. Um, but I, I do like that personally. Uh, I don't know if it's a perfect fit here because I think PRs start to fall apart when you get a large number of people involved in the discussion process, unless you have like someone shepherding like the, the first post and making sure that it's always up to date with the latest uh, conversation. Um, but I think no matter what, we need a shepherd for every change. And so the question just is, where is the shepherd maintaining the current documentation for the change itself? So not the specification, but where are they documenting those things like the rationale, the motivation? Um, and as people are contributing to the discussion, you know, they add things like when I was doing 2718, people would, if I saw a question come up like more than once, I would just add it to the rationale. And so you need somebody there doing that step, like making sure that this contains the latest information. For 1559, I felt you did a great job with that, with your HackMD article. Like it had a huge number, all the links to all the relevant materials that, you know, people could easily find everything. I really liked that personally. I don't know why everybody seems to hate that process, but I thought it was great. Right. It's like, I agree with you, I think in theory. Um, and then I, I just like think of all the practical steps and like hiccups to getting there. And it seems like a, a harder. Yeah, I'm currently yeah. debating, I think with Nick on this, on the EIP's repo, um, where we have the EIP's repo and it has a process. Yeah. Creating a new process for a thing is hard. 
So it's much easier to just shoehorn your thing into an existing process. So it's like, oh, there's a process right there that's related to Ethereum. I'll just jam my thing in there and just kind of squeeze it until it fits. Um, and I totally recognize why people do that because setting up a new change control process thing is a ton of work and lots of you know, figuring out the details. It's, it's complicated. Uh, I just, I worry so much that if everybody jams once, because what I've noticed is once someone jams their thing into the AP process, then they come back, like, like they, they force it to fit in there and it kind of fits. Like you can jam it in, it maybe fits. And then like a month, one or two people do that and a couple months pass. And then those people are like, hey, we should make the AIP process work better for these things. Right. And by making it work better for these things, it works less well for the thing it was originally designed for, which is core, AP, core EAPs. Yeah. And so each new thing that gets shoehorned in is bringing in people that want to change the process to fit their thing better, which means it doesn't fit the thing it was originally designed for as well. And so I think that's my worry of the, the whole shoehorning. And I... I'm constantly arguing with people on the APS repo about this, like <laughs> three or four times a week, at least about someone, you know, wanting to change the process um, because it doesn't fit their thing. And I don't have a good solution other than, Hey, go build your own process, which yeah. isn't a good solution. <laughs> it sucks. Well, I don't think that we are going to get a solution right away today in this call <laughs> for everything, but uh, no. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, in improving the process, we, we have we have covered like, a long distance and educating people like how do we work. And now that with some new changes coming in, maybe if we try to define the process early on would be helpful for other people. While I agree to both uh, Micah and uh, Tim's suggestion about uh, seeing EIP repository in a different way, but I think uh, that's that's workable for core EIPs and there are a ton of people who are there uh, using ERCs as well. So if ERCs are there, processes are there, standards are there, it will be cluttered. We just have to try to clean it up. And uh, with the help of some of the bots that, uh, that have been designed recently, uh, to uh, you know, help us with the process. I think we are in a process of cleanup. And uh, if I look at the stats today, out of about 400 proposals that exist in EIP repositories, 200 uh, are in stagnant. So we, we did some part of it and we are trying to clean up step by step and come up with clear and concise list of proposals. Those are good and relevant. And as per the like people looking into the history, may not everyone uh, be interested in looking into the history, but some students, especially like I, I interact with a lot of college students and I have seen when they are trying to learn something, they try to dig inside. Say for example, account abstraction, the latest proposal that Vitalik proposed. So when one of my students, he was looking into that proposal, he tried to look into all earlier proposals that were written for account abstraction. They may not have been in like a final status, but it did help. So I think keeping history for these is useful, is helpful for new people getting on board. And uh, yes, we might want to improve the process, do some cleanup and give it a good look. Yeah, and I think realistically, um, this is going to be a high focus after the merge, or like at least once the merge is like done code wise. Um, yeah, I and, and I think it's going to be hard to get input from like actual engineers and folks from like Danny until the merge is 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 a bit farther along. Um, yeah, even like personally, it, it's. Yeah, it, I know this is important that we need to do it, but it's like obviously less important than the merge. And so it just like falls to the bottom of my priority list every week um, relative to just whatever re thing related to the merges. So I think once we're like in a spot where the code is mostly stable and we're, we're kind of going to main nets, then, then people will have much more mental bandwidth to deal with this and we'll also be forced to deal with it because basically um we're going to need to start planning the withdrawals for afterwards uh, i think uh, sooner i mean um, i understand your priority list here like getting into merge specs in place 
but i think the sooner we start uh, discussing on the process better it would be for us because as for now we have just one proposal that kind of describe the changes what we are expecting how we are going to switch from proof of work to proof of stake that is very good but in case we are trying to have some more features or something to be added if we keep getting them as like you know um, proposals as eips and we have a place particular place for that that would be good for people to follow because they would not feel the friction like something has changed it would be same but if we start thinking about right at the point when merge is there i think it would be a little late for that i agree it's not optimal but i just think it's not realistic to expect a ton of feedback before the merge is much farther along so that's just and I think folks like probably like me and Danny can start looking at it. Um, but yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, it just feels like there's, there's little appetite from like actual engineers to discuss this. And maybe, I don't know, once we get to a spot where like the core devs calls are pretty empty again, because like, you know, we're done with the merge and people are just saying that they fix the latest bugs. That's maybe like a good, a good signal that we should start bringing it up. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, as I said that it's it's not going to be like decided today only, but I just wanted yeah. to start discussion. So um, yeah. we hope to get it discussed at some point. I think one thing that could be valuable um, and uh, is, is maybe getting like Sam to present the executable spec on an all-core devs once uh, he feels it's like in a reasonable spot. So that I, I suspect like most people on all-core devs don't even know that's being worked on. Um, yeah, PPDIP yeah. could be. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, maybe okay. like a if we can like PPDIP absolutely, but if we can also do like a five ten minutes on all core devs, I think. Yeah, it, it just catches different audiences, but like absolutely, we should have a PPDIP and maybe like a sort of teaser on all core devs or something uh, where he can just kind of give a high level overview and then invite people to come there. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll try to schedule something uh, yeah. real soon on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Uh, I think we are close to like uh, half of the meeting. So let's just move on. Uh, unless someone has some last thought to go on with on this topic. Uh, only comment for me, uh, to, just to close it out, is if you guys do want to try to devise a new system, um, I'd be happy to be involved in whatever that process is. So feel free to invite me to things if you think that would be valuable. Cool, we'll do. All right. So moving on to the next item listed here is remove updated from EIP one. Uh, Lightland has just started this issue, and I saw some comment from Micah, but I'm not sure if uh, like uh, uh, there is any reference to any pull request. The link is added to the agenda. So this updated is uh, is there in uh, EIP one, but it's not being used. It is about the last updated. I think it is redundant because uh, GitHub will give us the last date of updating that proposal. So it is not something that an EIP author should keep on adding every time he is updating his proposal. Any thoughts can you, or can you? Yeah. Uh, sorry, can you put a link to the agenda in? Zoom, since I was late, I missed it. That way I can find these okay. links you're referring to. Okay, okay. I'm just, uh, I just shared the link of the issue and I'm also sharing the link of the agenda here. So the idea here yeah, is so, like, yeah, please. So for, for that one, we just need, um, we have two PRs out. We just need to merge one of them. So both, both PRs remove let's it. Just like, turn, let's just turn Alex's PR into ready for, review without, without, without it. alex agreeing <laughs> i'll do it <laughs> sorry alex you you are overruled all right i did it <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't auto merge now maybe look at look at oh, you no, making you, waves someone who was an admin has to merge it because it changes right. something other than an eip file
Okay, we will be coming to that admin issue as well. Like that is there in my agenda list today. But before that, I also want to go through this one. So uh, do we consider that uh, number two, remove updated from EIP one, uh, like solved? Yeah, thank you. Right. Just literally need to click the merge button on this, which I'm about to do. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, next one is uh, some of the changes that uh, I was wondering how to deal with, and that's why I have listed them here. With this uh, EIP bot, uh, like as I mentioned earlier, 200 proposals have been moved to stagnant so far in the month of uh, September and October. So I'm looking for some of the guidelines to understand and maybe able to educate people on that the status changes from stagnant. The present EIP one suggests that it has to go back to e, uh, draft. Uh, do we want to always go back to draft or is it okay if we can uh, update it to review or is it okay to go back to the last status? Say for example, one proposal was in last call but it was last call for over six months. The IP author did not do anything and now it has been moved to stagnant. What do people think about uh, when this proposal has to be pulled out? Should it go back to draft, review, or it can go to last call? Um, so if someone has, I think I'd rather people go to review first, so I don't have a good reason for that now that I think about it. I just want to make sure that people are getting the appropriate eyes and they aren't just skipping ahead to the end in hopes that no one will actually look at their thing. Right. And with the last call here is like, I mean, I was thinking that if a proposal was in last call, now has it been moved to a stagnant? It, it, it can be allowed to go back to last call, but that would be the day one. Again, 14 days, so it will get the enough review period of time. So I guess... I guess re realistically, if someone wants to go straight from nothing to last call, I don't actually have an argument against that. Like if, if you're so confident in your thing that you think that you don't need anyone else to look at it before it's done, um, I guess you could just go straight to last call. Like, like I can't think of a good reason to force people to iterate through the steps. Like the more I think about it. So I guess, I guess, yeah, I don't, I don't have any good argument for making, forcing people to go through the steps. Yeah, that sounds fair to me as well. We might want to uh, like add some text to EAP when describing these changes. Um, yeah, Lightland, do you have any thoughts or do you think it is fair to go back to the original status? Um. I don't really mind that much. I would prefer slightly to go to draft review, but if they really want to go to last call, that's also okay. Yeah, because it makes people the are rules simpler. <laughs> right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, uh, we want like people should should be around for the proposal to move it, and we don't want the process to be a hurdle for them to like move their proposals. All right, I will make a note of that. The next one is, uh, I think uh, we discussed it yesterday in the EIP uh, editor's apprenticeship meeting. It's like when an author is making a pull request to change the status, um, would it require editor's permission or should the bot design it like it should be auto-merged? Like our, our thought were like, um, Lightland suggested that it should be auto-merged because author is there. What was the question? Uh, so, Is it like if the if it's created by the author? Mm -hmm. So um, actually, I, I saw that there is this one example. Um, I think uh, the proposal was um, uh, 1523. So it said that the bot uh, left a message that it is auto merging, but it never merged. So I guess there is some bug. Uh, you might want to look into it a little. All right, will do. I suppose uh, Lightland has also created an issue in the EIP bot repository, so you might get some reference on that. Okay. okay. 
Uh, the next one is if moving the proposal is impossible for any reason. Say, for example, uh, EAP 3403, partial removal of refunds. We know that there is another proposal that went into one of the earlier upgrades, and this is never going to go through. Now this has been moved to stagnant. So we would want this proposal to be out of repository, not stay in the stagnant forever. So the, the next course of action could be to move it to withdrawal. And uh, withdrawn, I don't know if the author would be around to do the thing. So I was wondering about what could be the other ways. So we make a cleanup here without uh, um, author's uh, involvement. If if we, if someone creates a pull request and author approves it, it's fair enough. If not, can EIP editor do it? Uh, sorry, I was trying to merge that. Um, what's the short version of what you just said? So for a proposal which no longer uh, we know that is no longer to go in the system. What do we do with that if they are standing in stagnant status? What do you mean no longer to go in the system? Uh, so uh, there are a couple of proposals, say for example, EIP 2070, which was Meta E prepared for, I guess, Berlin or London. Uh, I know that it's not gonna go ahead. So it's better to be withdrawn. That is that we know the author, maybe we can reach, but there are a few more proposals. Um, there was one for partial removal of refunds, EIP 3403. We know that there is some other proposal that went into the final upgrade. So this would never pull through. And we don't want to leave in stagnant forever. Is it fair that someone creates a pull request what, to what, move it? Why don't, we wanna, why don't we wanna leave it stagnant forever? I thought that was the whole point of stagnant is, is a place we can dump things that are abandoned or the author no longer seems to care about. Because there is a better proposal that actually went into it and it was proposed by the same author. Yeah, I'm, like I still think there's value in, so I'm not a fan of doing anything with other people's EIPs. And so we, the two options we have currently with our current process is either allow it to fall into stagnant just due to no one touching it for six months or two months or whatever it is, or ask the offer, author to, to withdraw. Like we don't have a process for any other terminal states besides those two. And I treat them like mentally as fairly similar. Are you saying that you want a to delete the EIP or just move it to some new? Uh, no, I, I was wondering status? like, I was wondering like the proposal that has a hope that it can be pulled back should stay in withdrawn as long as author wants to. But there are certain proposals which personally I feel is no hope for them to ever get added to the final repository because uh, that was an intermittent proposal and something better was proposed during the same cycle and the better one went into the upgrade. So we know that the older version is never gonna go through. So the two questions I have, or one question or comment, um, what would you like to see done with these? Like, do you want them deleted from the repository or do you just want a new status? Uh, maybe withdrawn because that is the only terminal status we have got here. It's just that this time withdrawn is not by the author. Um, it has to be with the permission of EIP editors. I'm, I'm just proposing this. So my concern is, is that deciding what is, which EIPs are never, po ne never possible and which are not is challenging at best. Like for example, this, uh, this proposal 3403, partial removal of refunds. Like maybe the authors feel that there's still a chance for that just with a little bit of tweaks or whatever. Um, similarly, like when before EIP 1559 went out, we had several counter proposals that people right. created. And while 155, yeah, while 1559, one could argue kind of it won. Some the, the authors of those may feel like, you know, they want to try this again in six months or a year or whatever. Maybe they're waiting for 1559 to fail so they can bring their thing back in. And so I'm very hesitant as an editor to get into the business of deciding whose EIPs are no longer relevant and whose aren't. Like I would rather the author make that decision. And if the author makes that decision, they can move it to withdrawn. And with the, 
with Alex's change, there will be a withdrawal reason. And they can say, uh, we decided to go with EIP XXX instead. This is no longer relevant. Um, that being said, like I'm perfectly fine with stagnant being terminal. Like if it, we can just update EIP one or the picture or whatever to just say, you know, stagnant, stagnant can be terminal. Like it's okay if things stay stagnant forever, because there will be a lot of stuff that isn't stagnant forever. I hear you. Yeah, there was this another proposal that was also in my mind, like 2593, which was escalator fee market change for ETH 1.0. Now that 1559 is there. So uh, I was considering that it may not go through, but uh, hearing your thoughts, it, it is possible. And yeah, an author may decide at this at some point that he would want to bring it back. Okay, uh, so I see one more plus one on stagnant forever. Uh, so maybe we would like to uh, make these changes on EIP one. I will keep it open for at least one or two more meetings. Uh, the, these changes that we are discussing today uh, for EIP one. And then after a few rounds of discussion, maybe we will update the EIP one. Does that sound reasonable? <laughs> Yeah, I'm also okay with just if you want to create a PR against um, EIP one, we can have discussion there oh. asynchronously if you prefer that. But yeah, that that may speed up the process. Makes sense. All right, and the last one here on the list was um, about the um, moving the proposal if there is a necessity, but EIP author or champion isn't actively involved. I know, Micah, you suggested someone uh, getting involved from the EIP editor apprenticeship program to look into that. And we kind of discussed that uh, yesterday uh, in the EIP apprenticeship program. But uh, uh, the concern here is we might want to have author's approval to be added them as a champion or co-author for the proposal. And if we are yes. not, get, not getting the author's response at all, <laughs> What is the solution? So uh, ideally, we get the the current author to like if they're not interested in doing the championing championing themselves, like the the busy work of fixing things and getting through the review process, making changes, etc. Then ideally, we get the author to sign off on somebody helping them out. And so, for example, you know, if if there's some Will, Will, William? I don't know what he goes by. Uh, if he wants to help out, that would be a great place to help. And he helps someone who was interested in getting involved in core EAPs to learn the process and everything. Um, but they can do it with someone else's idea. So you have someone with an idea they want to push through, but they don't want to do all the bureaucratic stuff of EIP editing. They can get help from someone who wants to learn the process. Um, so that's the ideal scenario, which I think we all agree on. If the author is completely unresponsive, but we do want to get it pushed through, the fallback option is to have find someone who wants to champion it and go through the editorial process to just basically make a clone of it, make a new EIP, new EIP that says the same thing, but with a different set of authors, and push that one through. And if that one gets pushed through, then eventually the other one will go stagnant. So um, the second option. Uh, question, uh, the EIP would not be the same number, correct? Actual champion, presumably, and so it will actually make it final. Mm -hmm. And then once it's final, then the original one will eventually fade away into stagnant or withdrawn. Got it. OK. Uh, let us give some more thought. We did discuss, and yesterday we had a couple of more people joining in the meeting. So we are trying to come up with a small group of volunteers who might want to help us in this process. Uh, maybe we, we discuss with the EIP author, try some more time, give some more time to it. And if not, then maybe that is the ultimate option, I suppose. Yeah, um, maybe try reaching out to the author on multiple channels, like mm -hmm. just like email or Discord or um, GitHub just to see, maybe they're just simply not getting the messages. I don't know. Yeah, makes sense. Well, thank you. Um, 
Okay, uh, that's like most of the sections. The next one is EIP Insight. Uh, so this is just a monthly report that I have started recently talking about how we are doing on EIP site. Uh, up till October 15, there are two new proposals. One is account abstraction 4337. The other one is difficulty bomb delay to uh, summer, June. That is EIP 4345. One proposal moved from draft to review, that is an ERC 1581, and about 115 proposals have been moved to um, stagnant status. We see some efforts are being made to pull out some of the proposals that is good and encouraging that at least people are trying to move their proposal to a decent status. We are happy with the progress that uh, that we are making with the help of BART and the team, EIP editors, Alita and everyone who are heavily engaged in helping out with this. So thank you, everyone. The next item uh, that we have uh, listed here is the future of the EIP merge BART. So uh, we know that there was another BART uh, run by uh, Nick Johnson, and uh, that was not uh, working for a while, or we thought that it's a good idea to create our uh, create a different bot, and that's why we have EIP bot. Uh, I was wondering, like, is it safe to turn it down, or do we want to have it um, running? Are you talking about the old so one? Right. Is this the one with the Travis um, CI that mm -hmm. we're getting now? Yeah, I don't right. think Nick's yeah, bot has run for a while. Uh, but he's still running it. I mean, he has still kept it on and he wants to check whether it's safe to turn it down if it is not being used at all. And if it is being used, it's fine. I think that this is the, a different one. We have two EIP validators I'm realizing. One is in Travis, it's in Ruby. Um, and I don't know if you want to like trans, transfer the logic from here over to the other one um, or something, but regardless, um, I'm to, say. So to, answer, to, an, to answer Nick's question, uh, yes, he can turn it off. We, we do not use it anymore. I believe it's been disconnected from GitHub. All right. That makes sense. Um, so to Alita's question, um, yes, long term, it would be nice if we consolidated the bots mm -hmm. into one consistent location and ideally one consistent language. Um, but I think that's probably not a high priority. It's not for me. Okay, sounds good. All right. So this is good, like I can inform him to turn it down. Uh, the next one uh, listed here is admin access to EIP repo and a report to EIP editor. So recently we have made some, uh, I can't say changes. It's just that we are trying to uh, represent it correctly, like most active EIP editors and uh, we have a new section called Emeritus Editors to list all the editors. Thank you, Tim, for that suggestion. That really helped. I didn't want it to remove the name because it's it's good to have history there. And uh, I talked to different EIP editors, which are still as listed as active, but they would want to be like removed from there. Um, with that uh, list, I think I will be sending one more pull request to update the list uh, we have received from some of the EAP editors that they don't no longer want to be a part of active editing. Uh, but I was wondering, like uh, the EAP GitHub repository, there are very few people who have like admin access. Uh, I suppose, Micah, you already have the admin access. Unsure about Azic and uh, yep. Just, just me and the, um, I think it's just me, Jamie Pitts, and Nick Johnson. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm wondering, like, uh, not most of the people are heavily engaged, but Light Client is. So uh, can we consider getting access to the people who are working right now, right? Um, like, I know there are only two, three people, Exec, Light Client, Micah. I see all these comments. I know uh, Greg also expressed interest to get the right access to the current repo. Uh, what do people think about like any thoughts in favor, not favor otherwise? So for like client, I'm fine with him in access. I think Jamie is probably the one you need to talk to though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for I can. That up. Yeah, I can do that. On uh, for Axic, 
similarly okay. He contributes fairly regularly, uh, not as regularly, not as regularly as Matt, but regular enough that I consider him an editor. Um, with Greg, I'm more on the fence. And the reason is because pretty much the only time he interacts with the EIPs repo is when he's working on his own EIPs. Like he doesn't really do any editing of other people's stuff. And I'm kind of hesitant to in incentivize people to kind of get EIP access just so they can merge their own EIPs and bypass the process. Yeah. Um, that's my weak feelings. I, I, if he wants to get, return to being involved. I'm okay with that. And similar with Nick Johnson, like Nick Johnson was an active editor in the past, but isn't anymore. Um, again, the only time he interacts with the repos with his own stuff. Um, that being said, uh, Nick has historically shown a little more restraint and he usually will defer to the other editors um, and won't auto merge, like won't merge his own PRs, for example. Right. Um, so that's just my kind of surface thoughts on the subject. Right, for Nick, uh, he said that he would be, like, he would be interested in getting into active editing, but uh, his time constraint does not permit him. So he would like to be a part of non-active editors for now, but uh, Greg showed his interest and he said that I would be like, uh, like interested in getting back into editing. But for uh, access right now, I think uh, let's go ahead with light client and see with, like um, in a period of time, if we get more attention, more work done by more people, then we can start involving more one. Yeah, just um, talk to Jamie Pitts, I believe is the right person. All right. Okay. So that's all about it. Cool. We are almost done with the agenda items. We have just the next meeting, uh, sorry, the last meeting uh, decision or action items. Okay. Okay, the one thing the bot will uh, show a notice to new issues to make a discussion thread on Ethereum magician. I think the bot has started working on that direction, but there is one thing that we wanted to do in issues, EIP issues, which I think still need work on activating the bot to clean up the issue section. Maybe Alita, whenever you get chance to look into that, you might want to consider it. Can you repeat that? So we have one bot for pull request section of the EIP GitHub, right? That helps with the stagnant proposals and trying to clean it up, close them, marking them as stale or stagnant. Similarly, we would like to have a one for the issues section because we have over 400 issues and I mean, I'm assuming more than 50% are non-active um, discussion things. So if we can have similar bot activated and we start closing the issues, we will have room for active discussing issues, like real issues that people would like to discuss about. Got it. Okay, yeah, uh, that one is I can definitely do. Um, I will add that to the list. Yeah, uh, so I think that's all from the last meeting. And yeah, that concludes all the item listed here. Anyone has anything else to bring up today? Yeah, I'm just, uh, are there any other, I'm gonna be doing a bug bash with, with the bots this weekend um, and just try to basically get through every single bug. Um, so get your bugs in, <laughs> like if you know of any bugs that aren't reported yet, please report them on the EIP repo so uh, I can, EIP bot repo so I can just grind through them this, this weekend. Awesome. Okay, uh, Lita, just for your information, like he, he, uh, like there is this one resource, uh, he has reached out to me and he might be interested into looking into uh, the EIP bot side. Oh, like it, as in working on it? Yeah, not, not, not completely, but you, you mentioned earlier, right? So you might be uh, looking for someone. So he is interested, I'll, I'll try to get more conversation and if he fits with you, yeah. I'll be happy to refer to you. Okay, and I think that's all we have listed on the agenda today. Thank you everyone for joining. And yeah, hope to see you in two weeks.
Thanks, Pooja and everyone. Sweet. Thanks. Well, thank you. Bye bye.